Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a guide to the boss fights in the Spires of Ascension dungeon in Shadowlands. The Spires of Ascension is a bastion dungeon, with the entrance found here. Kyrian players will get a small bonus in this dungeon to help them kill Trash with the Spear of Destiny. After the first boss, a Kyrian player can pick up the spear from a dead Kyrian on the ground and use its AoE to help clear some trash. Our first boss is Kintara and her glowy bird snake buddy Azulis, I think? The pet is not tangible, and he's going to wander around living his own life. He spams a frontal cone, so just keep an eye on him and don't stand in front. The two of them have separate health pools, but one will enrage when the other dies, so for the most part keep them pretty even. On Mythic difficulty, you will see this deep connection beam connecting Kintara and her pet. Don't touch that, it hurts. At 100 energy, she will cast Overhead Slash at her tank, who may want to mitigate. Nobody else should be in front of her. Dark Lance can be interrupted, and you absolutely should kick that. If you don't kick it, extra dots are going to go out, your healer has to mop them up, and they will remember. Now and then, Kintaro will fly into the air and start targeting players with Charged Spear. That does a 5-yard AoE and drops a pool. If you're targeted with that, run away from your friends and be mindful of where you drop that pool. They last for the rest of the fight. If you kill the pet first, she's going to enrage for 30% extra damage and start spamming Charged Spear even when she's on the ground. That'll fill the arena up with pools over time, so finish her off before you're out of room. If you kill Kintara first, Azul's will start spewing out Maw-touched Venom in front of him, which fills the arena with pools over time. He'll also start dotting people with Insidious Venom while enraged, which is gonna start to hurt real quick. Overall, don't stand in front of or in anything, run the spears out, kill them mostly together, and kick Dark Lance. Easy first boss. Next up is Ventinax, also known as Bulletel, the boss. The key mechanic here is Shadow Whirls. The boss drops these underneath her, these little dark vortexes that fire out bolts. They're simple enough to avoid, but it gets really hectic late in the fight when there's a ton of them. If you get hit by a bolt, you'll take damage and fly up in the air like popcorn. Don't do that. Dark Stride will port her behind a player and smack them pretty good. The tank should be ready to taunt the boss back right away. She'll drop a new Shadow Whirl every time she Dark Strides. It does drop on her location before she leaves, though, not on the player she ports to. Now and then, she'll face a direction and cast the Blinding Flash Frontal Cone, and that will stun you if you're in it. The tank can sidestep that, and nobody should eat it. Getting stunned is a bad day with all those bolts flying around. When her energy bar is fully empty, the boss will sit for 10 seconds and recharge. She'll do nothing, but every Shadow Whirl in the room will fire out a ton of bolts. I recommend that you dodge them, although that might be easier said than done. That is the whole fight, though. Third, we have Oriforian. He'll aim a charged stomp AoE at his tank, which leaves behind the charged anima debuff. Nobody should be within 8 yards of the tank, and the healer can dispel the debuff after the stomp. Purifying Blast will target a player with an 8 yard AoE that leaves a dot. Run away from others if you get that so you don't cleave your friends, and you'll need some extra heals or a defensive to get you through that. Imperial Ordnance will put blue arrows over everyone, and after a few seconds drop rings under their feet. The rings will then spawn pools 3 seconds later. So you can stack up to group these if you want, just move out as soon as the rings appear. The tank will want to move the boss away from the pools after they go out to prepare for the next bit. When he runs out of energy, Oriforian will become drained and start to recharge anima. Each of those pools will gloop up into the air and become an orb that travels towards the boss. If an orb reaches him, it pops overcharge anima for big raid damage. We don't like that. If you poke it first, you pop it for anima surge, which is mild raid damage and a 10 second dot on you. You want to have people run around and soak the orbs, preferably with defensives. The key is going to be having some distance between the boss and the pools so that you've got time to pace out your soaks and help the healer keep up. Rinse and repeat and you've got yourself a dead boss. Last, we fight Devos, Paragon of Doubt. In phase 1, we fight her on the ground. She'll put out a few Lost Confidence debuffs onto players. That looks like this, does a ticking dot, and drops a pool when it falls off or is dispelled. Run out so that you can be safely dispelled, and healers might want to dispel melee first once they're clear. Or just dispel their favorites, up to them. Be extra careful not to step in any of those pools during this fight. If you touch them, you'll get the Lingering Doubt dot, which can stack. Abyssal Detonation is this slowly descending swirl that does big AoE damage when it lands. On Normal and Heroic, you can avoid this just by being outside of the ring. On Mythic, you'll need to hide in the Archon's Bastion bubble that spawns in the room. For Run Through, she'll aim in a direction and then skewer anyone in her path, don't be in front of that. And after 30 seconds or so, she'll enter Phase 2 by activating the thingy in the middle. That will blast everyone with raid damage, she'll start flying around, and some wind will start. 
The goal of this phase is to unlock the Archon Spear by charging it up with Anima, run into Anima orbs to pick them up, and just run over to the Spear in the middle to drop them off. Meanwhile, Slipstream or Backdraft winds are pushing you around and Doubt Pools are coming at you. Dodge the pools, fight the wind, and turn in orbs. Once the team has dunked enough orbs, the Spear unlocks and one player can click it to pick it up. They'll get a vehicle attack which they need to aim at Devos to hit her out of the sky and bring her back. A successful hit will take 10% off her health and bring her back to phase 1. And those are the fights! Thanks for watching! Check back to my channel for more boss guides and come visit me on Twitch if you like! Good luck in the Spires of Ascension and have a wonderful, wonderful day!